So much of what we've explored during this uh, Black History Month focuses on contributions of African Americans to the country's arts and culture. And now we go back to the 1970s where American Black History was made right here in Oakland. KDB's Tom Vakar explains how the sound of Oakland is still reverberating with a soulful beat worldwide. Once upon a dream, the dream came true, and it was Soul Beat on Oakland Public Access TV. This is the ending of the show. We're almost up out of here. For 25 years, from 1978 to 2003, Soul Beat was a 24-7 black-owned public access TV network founded by Chuck Johnson, who passed away in 2004. But we managed to uh, keep our belts pulled in and... Uh, we were able to make it 23 years. We were 23 years as of February the 4th. Soul Beat, based in Oakland, was the first music video network in the nation. It was completely freeform, mostly live, local, accessible, and truly revolutionary because it gave Oakland's people not a tube to stare at, but a mirror. A non-stop affection between the community and Soul Beat. Chuck Johnson, no relation to the founder, went from intern to producer to host of his own hip-hop and talk shows. And me growing up in Oakland, I used to just love the opportunity to turn on the TV and see us on television, where at times in the early 80s, early 70s, you know, African Americans wasn't that much on television. I Heart Radio DJ Rynell Showbiz Williams went into music inspired by Soul Beat. I was determined to be in the media because of Soul Beat. We got a chance to see a lot of black faces 24 hours a day. Many of those black faces, first shown on TV or shown very early in their careers, who later became mega music stars, were often seen on Soul Beat, including Michael Jackson, Prince, MC Hammer, Too Short, and Vogue, Digital Underground, Tupac Shakur. Whenever they came to the Bay Area, they had to knock on Soul Beat's door. So many, you know, songs, you know, broke on Soul Beat. Billy Jam, an Irish immigrant, had a four-hour hip-hop show every Saturday in the early 90s. He was playing all of this black music that got no exposure, but more importantly, it was also focusing on local artists, and even more importantly than that, it was doing community things. There were so many politicians that spoke to the community and got voted into office because they came to speak on Soul Beat and speak to Mr. Johnson. Soul Beat worked because many small local black-owned businesses found a way to buy some ads and became famous in their own right. We saw black-owned businesses left and right that promoted on Soul Beat. I thought that they were celebrities. It was no doubt the Oakland circle of life. It was truly Oaklanders watching Oaklanders. Most people that was on Sobe was from the community. So it was always that you might have saw your auntie, you might have saw your uncle, you might have saw your cousin. Sobe just showed the beauty of black faces, black owned businesses, black talent in one small city. Soul Beat also had a news director, Chauncey Bailey, who was later gunned down in 2007 by a crime syndicate that he was investigating as editor-in-chief of the Oakland Post. It was not just a music video station, it was a total 24-hour lifestyle. Will Soul Beat be reborn? A major studio is looking at making a documentary about this most unique venture and its founder, Charles Johnson. He was the definition of, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you very much indeed. Tom Vakar, KTVU Fox 2 News.